Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Pan Banya. That's right, I'm going to show you how to make the world's most famous tuna sandwich, which is really the world's most famous tuna salad, the Niçoise, stuffed and pressed inside a whole loaf of bread. And according to people who consider things, this is considered the ultimate picnic sandwich, since it has to be made ahead, and the longer it sits soaking in its own juices, the better. In fact, the name actually means bathed bread. But before we get to soaking our loaf, let's go ahead and get started by reviewing the rest of our ingredients. And for me, that begins with a whole bunch of olive oil packed tuna. Oh yeah, we gotta use the good stuff here. Sorry, Charlie. And what makes this sandwich so amazing is the play between that rich oily tuna and then our sharp and tense salty briny bits like capers, anchovies, and of course some olives. But before that happens, we have to prep what's probably the most important ingredient. And that would be some beautiful extra virgin olive oil into which we will stir a couple cloves of minced garlic. And by the way, extra credit for using something from the south of France. All right, something from near Nice would be nice. And what we'll do is stir that garlic in, and then let that sit steeping on the countertop while we prep our bread. And for this, we're gonna to wanna to use a nice stale loaf of crusty bread. And what we wanna do is slice this lengthwise about two thirds of the way down. And by the way, a loaf like this is fine, but I really do prefer using something a little flatter, like a ciabatta bread, but they were out. So I ended up with this fairly standard loaf of French bread. And then what we'll do once this is cut open is go ahead and pull out a good amount of bread from the top, especially down the center, as well as a little bit from the bottom. And you might've heard me say earlier that this should be a loaf of stale bread, which is just gonna work better because it's more absorbent. But unfortunately mine was not quite as stale as I thought it was. So that's my one and only regret here. We really do want this bread fairly dried out. But regardless, once that bread is prepped, we are gonna bathe that very, very generously with our garlic oil, like what seems to be a ridiculous amount. But don't be scared, this really is the key. And then what we'll do once that's been thoroughly and thoughtfully saturated, is we'll set that half off to the side to continue absorbing the oil, while we move on to top our bottom, which I think we should start with a layer of our beautiful vine-ripened tomatoes. All right, did I mention you should probably only make this in summer when the tomatoes are perfect? And since I want complete coverage, but only a single layer, I think cutting those slices in half makes them easier to place. And of course, anytime we're using freshly sliced tomatoes, we always want to season those, which I'm doing with some freshly ground black pepper, which is optional, as well as some salt, which is not. All right, definitely hit these with some salt. And then on top of our tomatoes, we will go ahead and place the rest of our veggies, which for me will be some thinly sliced red onions, some green and black olives, as well as some thinly sliced fresh banana pepper, although any fresh roasted or pickled pepper will work. And I should mention some other commonly included ingredients here would be things like artichoke hearts or sliced fennel or maybe some blanched green beans. All right, pretty much any vegetation is allowed. And then on top of our veggies, we'll go ahead and pile our tuna. And I do mean pile. And we will really try to go all the way to the edge, although it is fine if we have it piled up a little higher in the center. And as I mentioned, we really do want to use a very nice olive oil packed tuna. Or even better yet, we would slowly poach some tuna in some olive oil and use that. And if I'm not mistaken, we actually have a video for that. But no matter what we're using, once our tuna is down, we'll go ahead and top that with some anchovy fillets. Which I know not everybody loves, or at least that's what they say. But here it is absolutely critical. So please go ahead and add them. And if you happen to forget to mention they're on there to those people on your guest list that claim not to like them, that's fine. There's a really good chance they'll have no idea. And then after the anchovy, we will continue on with their good friend capers. And we'll apply a generous sprinkling of those, followed by some sliced hard boiled egg. But I'm not trying to make an egg sandwich here. All right, I just want enough so I get a little bit in each bite. So I'm gonna space those out pretty well, which is gonna work out nicely because into all those spaces, I'm gonna place some freshly picked basil leaves, which is gonna work so well with all these ingredients, especially the ingredient we're gonna finish with which would be one last layer of freshly sliced tomatoes. And of course, when we get down to that last slice, we will turn that around so it fits the shape of the crust perfectly. And just like the first layer of tomato, we're gonna to wanna to season that with salt and pepper. At which point we'll go ahead and drizzle all this with a couple of tablespoons of white wine vinegar, or the wine vinegar of your choice. And then if we happen to have a tablespoon or so of our garlic oil left, we will finish up by drizzling that over the top. 
And that's it. We can go ahead and place our top half over and give everything a nice press. And if anything falls out, which it will, you can just go ahead and tuck that stuff back in. Or, of course, eat it. And at this point, we can go ahead and wrap this in two or three layers of plastic. And if you're thinking, man, that looks good enough to eat, I think I will skip the wrapping and pressing step and just enjoy my tuna French sandwich right now. Don't do it. Okay, you're not even going to get close to the same experience unless this is wrapped and pressed properly. Okay, especially if you use stale bread like you're supposed to. As we really do need to give it time for all that olive oil to soak in, as well as all those incredible juices the salt is pulling out of those vegetables. Okay, it's our bread being saturated with all that that really makes this sandwich what it is. So we will go ahead and wrap that in plastic, and then in a couple layers of heavy-duty aluminum foil. And one small tip here. For the foil, I like to make sure the seams end up on the top, so that none of that olive oil and juices can leak out of the bottom into the pan. Speaking of which, once that's all been correctly encased in foil, we will transfer that into some kind of large roasting pan or baking dish, and then somehow, some way, weight it down, which I like to do by placing a sheet pan over the top, and then I'll use something heavy like this cast iron griddle to weigh it down. But you could also use some cans of food. And that's it, we can go ahead and transfer that into the fridge, and we will let gravity work its magic for at least about eight to 12 hours. Okay, longer is better, and it's not mandatory, but if you did want to flip that over once during the process, that would not be a bad idea. And that's it. The next day we'll go ahead and unwrap that, preferably at a picnic. And we will slice in to see how we did. And you know what? That looks pretty nice. Or should I say pretty nice. And even though as you're building this, you might be thinking you're putting a little too much on. As you can see, if you weight it down properly, it should all compress beautifully. But anyway, I went ahead and cut off another piece to go in for the official taste which I did way too small. Okay, you need a certain amount of bread around this stuff to hold everything together, so don't make that mistake. But portion size aside, that really was an incredible bite of food. Okay, obviously all those ingredients we included work so well together, but what makes it so good is that it's all delivered in this beautifully compressed package, held together with what's hopefully a severely soaked bread. In fact, I heard the late, great Julia Child say one time, that if you don't have stuff running down your arm as you eat this, you did it wrong. And while it wasn't exactly dripping down my arm, my bread really was nicely saturated. So for a little skinny piece, that really was amazing. But I did go ahead and cut a bigger one so I could plate it up and take some pictures. Oh, and if you are gonna bring this to a picnic, you could if you wanna cut these pieces ahead of time and then wrap them up individually. But for a more impressive presentation, I would probably just bring it whole, along with a cutting board and knife, and then just cut it to order when you're ready to serve. But both ways work fine, so you decide. I mean, you are after all the Tanya Harding of your Pan Banya partying. But no matter how you serve it, this will be getting rave reviews. But anyway, that's it. My take on Pan Banya, or as I like to refer to it around the office, Pan Ban Ah Hell Yeah. All right, there are good tuna sandwiches, and there are great tuna sandwiches. And then there is this, which is in a whole class by itself which is why I really do hope you give it a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.